I just want to take a little bit of time to, to focus on one of the individuals you, you mentioned previously, which is Henry Clay, one of those future, future Secretary of States, um, because I, he's one of those figures that that I, you know really is one of the iconic national Republicans. You know, the the, the man most credited with the American system, um, which is going to you know take up a, a great deal of the you know, next few episodes. Um, you know, Clay, I think, is he's one of those characters that historians love, right? I mean, he's a, he's a very flamboyant personality. Um, you know, he, he, he very much in contrast to like the the very boring John Quincy Adams and others' time. You know, he he is. You know, when we look at this generation, uh, the, the, the kind of second class of American statesmen, right? You know, we, we we're moving away from sort of the literary period to the great orator, to the great performers in the in the legislature, and and Clay, who I'm mean, one of his big uh, uh, early breaks. He's one of the lawyers, actually, of, of uh, uh, during the, the treason trial for Aaron Burr um, back in the day. But can, can you just touch, touch a little bit about, you know, Henry Clay, how he gets to, to, to this part of, of prominence, and, and also some of his, his kind of business dealings. I know uh, uh, Dr. De Lorenzo with, within uh, Hamilton's Curse. You, know, you could have re- renamed it uh, Clay's Curse for the degree, the degree that which he highlights some of the his own cronyism involved in all this sort of stuff. But I, I know he's going to be a figure that's going to come up a lot when it comes to the defense and the promotion of the Second Bank of the United States. Um, before we go deeper into those those kind of historical issues, kind of expand more on the person Henry Clay, who is now Speaker of the House, if I believe, if I, if I understand correctly, during during this time, right? Yeah. So Henry Clay is a noted speaker of the house. He's one of those politicians who a lot of people would say he was he, sort of, I guess the, 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 um, the, the, the Buffalo bills where they, they would run, they, they, they went to the Super Bowl full t- four times in a row and they never got a uh, Super Bowl <laughs> champion. Henry Clay was a perennial runner for the president, uh, the presidency. He, he got the nomination uh, a couple times, but he, he just never was able to get the top prize. So it's one of those politicians alongside John Sherman in the late 1800s, who uh, a lot of people thought if they had to bet money that he would have gotten the presidency at one point, but he, but he never did. And that was something that always uh, tormented him. And, and Clay, as you've mentioned, is in many ways kind of a bridge between, say, a Hamilton, uh, the Hamiltonian cronyism, the Hamiltonian system, and the Lincoln uh, Lincolnian cronyism, I guess, is the way the way you'd put it. Clay is is that individual from the 1820s to the early 1850s that, in many ways, embodies that big government, uh, central banking, protective tariffs, uh, foreign intervention uh, in certain aspects, and uh, pro uh, public works and internal improvements. So he's kind of that bridge between Hamilton and Lincoln. And Clay himself, he was the he was, uh, you know, you look at his his his, his family background. He, had, uh, you know, I believe he married the daughter of a wealthy Kentucky businessman. He himself was involved in uh, hemp production, which of course might seem a little hypocritical, given that he was, um, or not hypocritical, just a little, um, <laughs> uh, a little blatant cronyism, given that he was always promoting protective tariffs, including on hemp to block uh, Russian hemp. Uh, He was a a very big proponent of central banking, and he got money through the central bank, uh, the second bank of the United States. So he was someone who was uh, willing to advocate government intervention, but of course he wanted a little uh, cut of the pie for himself. And so Clay emerges as a big figure during this time period, someone who would contest with individuals such as Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, and even Thomas Hart Benton, a uh, relatively neglected individual from Missouri who we hopefully we'll, we'll get into. Uh, we'll talk about this time period. But Clay is a fascinating character, and he is a one of the defining cronies of this era. Mm-hmm. 